Nothing like a new bike. There's only one thing better than a new bike, and that is doing mods to a zero mile. 2023 KTM XCF350. Let's check this out and find out what's being done to it. Pleased to be joined with my good buddy, Joe Koenig from Trim Tax. Motorcycle rider extraordinaire, motorcycle mechanic extraordinaire. We are just drooling over not only your awesome car in the background, but also your awesome brand new 2023 KTM XCF350. And you have been riding for so many years, you're just not even wasting any time. You're not taking it on a break-in ride. You are just going straight to the mod. So what are you doing here, Joe? Well, uh, every five years or so, I upgrade. I'm a KTM lover, and I have a 250 XCF and also a 350 XCF that we run uh, in the dirt and on ice racing in the wintertime. So in the, in the wintertime on the ice, you need a little bit more power because the screws and the tires weigh about 40, 50 pounds heavier than a normal wheel. So you need more power to turn that extra weight. So yeah. the 350 is getting just the normal mods that I do. My uh, 2017 350, which I sold to a buddy, uh, to Jeff Woody. Um, I'm basically doing the same mods that I did to that one. So I've got the Mako uh, handlebar shock system. Wow. And that's a system that moves uh, and, and uh, dampens the vibration, the sharp hits, the sharp roots and rocks that you run across out in the trails or in Moab, you know, which is a lot of rock out in that area. Um, I also uh, put the aluminum uh, radiator guards on, which is a smart deal. For sure. Yeah, I mean, the radiators are 200 bucks a pop and a set of guards, you know, is 150. So you just oh, save nice piece. Of course, I like drilling a lot of holes. I like lightness. Who makes these, Joe? Uh, those are, um, gosh, I, there's a couple different brands. Uh, oh, you're smart, because we're getting ready to go single track riding, and there's going to be plenty uh, of bullet, Those are bulletproof. That's good stuff. Good bulletproof. Stuff. So, uh, one of the things, we, ah, ride, we, ride, ah, in the tight, ah, we ride in the tight trees, uh, in the woods, mostly. So the Radius uh, CX uh, Recluse is in every bike that we run. Uh, That's right. It's, You're a big believer in that. You That's know, cool. yeah, absolutely. And, you know, one of my friends, uh, Jeff Fredette, is an IXD Legend. champion. Legend. 32-time uh, medalist. Uh, several years ago, he actually, I called him Mr. Recluse because he's got the clutch hands. And uh, he's running the Recluse clutch also. So it's this just so kind of cool. like cheating, but it just, uh, it saves you from stalling the engine on a, uh, when you have to abort a hill climb uh, and you know, you got to lay the bike over or drag it around, uh, you will then not have to try and restart the bike. You know, the bike is still going to be running for you. It's awesome. And guys, I apologize if I'm making any extra noise. As you can see, I got on my Sunday's best and breaking in a new pair of boots. Nothing better. I think we're ready to go riding. Huh? That's for sure. You're going to have to wear those to the drag strip to tomorrow to break them in. So, hey, I'll show you a couple more things. Yeah, so, let's see what other models you, you go. got going. There you go. Trail to $50. You keep, uh, the, uh, this is a battery-operated uh, temp meter. gauge. No, temp gauge. Temp gauge, yep. okay. So, there's a little uh, metal sliver here that slides into the back of the radiator, and I just mount it right on the handlebar. And that's going to keep an eye on the, uh, on the temperature. Very cool. The new KTMs. They've come up with a new cap now. So uh, going to a higher pressure rated cap, I think they've already done that for us. Back in the day, that would be the first mod you do on a KTM is you put a 2.0 uh, bar uh, pressure cap on here. So that means it would take 2.0 bar pressure to spit any juice out, okay, when you overheat it. Very cool. And then, uh, so on top of all of that, uh, updating the levers. Stock levers, these are much better. You can adjust them as you need to, uh, trail conditions and what have you. Um, and Joe Koenig always runs a flywheel weight. So this is a ah, old this school. Is a eight ounce. Old school. Adds eight ounces. Yeah, not to your belly. <laughs> it adds it, That's right? what I did at dinner. Yeah, you but did. You I, had the 10 ounce. I added the 10 ounce. 10 ounce Let steak. me ask you this, because I'm sure, you know, we know back in the day that was essential, but these bikes have gotten so good from the factory. 
There right. might be some that say you don't need a flywheel weight on a new modern KTM. What would your response be? Well, uh, they're absolutely right. It just depends on your riding style, depends on how hard of a hit you want. Um, you know, without a doubt, you can soften a bike up by dropping three teeth on the rear sprocket or adding two to the rear sprocket. You can make it bark, you can make it, you know, you can mellow it out. Uh, you know, this is just for me is uh, about traction. So when we ride the trails that we normally do every week, it's about 15 mile loop. The wide open throttle jack is literally less than 10 seconds or 20 seconds in that whole hour, okay? There is absolutely no place to open the throttle up full. So what's most more important than that is the tractable power band and tractable uh, engine characteristics. So that's kind of what, and you know, that's just something that I love. Uh, my son-in-law has got a 450 and he's like, never gonna put one of those on my bike. And you know what his bike did? What's that? It flamed out constantly. So that flywheel weight will not only make your bike more tractable, but it's going to eliminate the flame outs that, uh, and this is not much. I mean, this, you're adding this little, oh, that, that's not it. Anyways, it's all wrapped up. But basically you're just gluing on a piece of steel around the outside, not much bigger than this, around the outside of your stator. Wow. Not, yep. Subtle difference. Makes a so, big difference in the woods though, that's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Uh, and do you already have uh, suspension? You already got your suspension done? I did, yeah. Wow, where, yeah. Are, you, where are you getting that done at? That is done at Enduro Engineering. Okay, in set Michigan. up. In Michigan, yep. Is that, is that something you send away? Or I you... did, I sent it out, yep. And I know that they, uh, they're the best at it okay. and they're, they're good friends over there. Um, I lowered the bike one inch in the rear and one inch in the front because I am 64 years old and when I'm stuck on a hill somewhere in Moab, I don't want to try <laughs> to run my leg over the top of a super tall bike. So. Well, that's, that's what I love about you that I'm sure some will watch this video and be like, come on, it's a brand new bike. Why are you doing all this? But you, you've been riding long enough that you know exactly what it takes to get it dialed in. As drag racers, yeah. you know, we go through all those infinite tuning possibilities to get something right. You know in your head what you need. Even though KTM makes changes from years to years, I actually talked to Bobby Dawson at Prim. He's the mechanic for one of the top riders out there. And uh, he said the 2023s are handling well. That's the feedback that they're getting. Yes. has some of the best handling that KTM's yeah. ever had. They made some subtle changes. And, man, yeah. I think with what you're doing, lowering it, this thing's going to be a tank in the woods. They did. I've had the pleasure of riding another uh, uh, 350 XCF, same year, and uh, definitely less anti-squat. So they changed the characteristic here of the relationship to the counter shaft to the swing arm pivot. They either raised or lowered the engine in the frame. I believe they lowered it, which uh, negated a lot of squat when you're on the throttle. Like you see the boosas in drag racing, they uh -huh. leave the line and they squat. The whole back of the bike goes down 16 inches. Yep. So that is, the bike has less squat. Um, I'm also a light rider. I'm 160 pounds. And these bikes are, most bi dirt bikes are set up for 180 pound rider. So I can get by with this spring in the rear, but I want a little bit more plushness. Um, we're not jumping off of huge crevasses and stuff like that. So I'd rather have a little bit more of a plush ride. So they put uh, just a, the next size lighter uh, rear spring on there. It's a nice investment. Yeah. This thing is going to be dialed that's, in. You know, that's about it. Other than some switches and uh, uh, a little bit of gearing change, uh, I'll do a sprocket change. And we add a, uh, the factory fuel filter is kind of, Kind of small and you know not that great so i'll put an inline filter uh on the bike which has got a much larger uh, filtration uh, capability um, another thing that i love is you've heard of a quarter turn throttle this is like an eighth turn throttle what yeah so what i like is the g2 they're out of illinois here uh they have a huge cam on here so the bigger the cam the quicker the throttle action um, and I like that. Uh, that's, that's just my preference. 
Um, if you're a beginner rider, it might be a little bit too much light switch for most people, but since I'm softening the power band with the, uh, with the flywheel weight, and I might gear it to soften it a little bit, uh, now I, I want to uh, uh, have less rider movement, which is gonna save me energy in the long run. Since I'm good with my hand, the twisting the throttle, I, I, you know, I can definitely uh, utilize a, like a light switch throttle application. <laughs> Man, this is awesome. Your bike is, is so dialed. What a dream, I love it personalized for you it's like you're your own factory mechanic right now kind of sorta you yeah. you've come up through the ranks so let me ask you this i mean i'm a guy still on an old two-stroke i love it i'll never get rid of that but how far have we come in terms of trail bikes from the old 250s motocross bikes that we used to mod up to go on the trails to this absolute warrior i mean is there any comparison at all um gosh there is you know what there's still two tires and two wheels and one set of handlebar, rear brake, you know, shift lever, foot pegs. It's really the same bike, okay? Um, it's just that it's been, you know, developed and evolved into uh, something a guy like myself or basically anybody can appreciate. But I ride with a couple guys that are on a uh, 23-year-old KTM, okay? Two strokes and I can't catch up, you know, they're a little bit younger than I am and they're on old school equipment. They take good care of it. And they just, the KTM seem to run forever. So they're really, really nice. The only flaw they have with the new bike is here is the starter button okay. and the kill switch. And oh. feel it, it's flush. You can't even, you know, in an emergency, oh. you can't find that sucker. I wonder why they so did that. So I am putting on a, uh, a different button assembly off of like a, uh, um, like thumper, thumper racing. Okay. So this is for like a dual sport bike. You can see it's a big, easy start switch and a big, easy kill switch. Um, and the reason they move that over here is because this side is there's two mapping switches on here. You got, you got your heavy hit and your soft hit, and then also traction control and a launch control. So if you want to, if you want to do a motocross start, you can go into launch control mode. I don't use that. I'm not a racer. Uh, I'm, I'm a pleasure rider, um, and but the traction control is interesting. There's times when you, there's just certain times when you don't want it, you'll turn it off. I pretty much ride with it on year round. Um, so it's just another, uh, again, there's the difference between old school and, uh, and the new stuff. I like it. Yeah, you got traction control on this bike. You've got, uh, you know, launch control. You've got two different power maps and uh, fuel injection, phenomenal machine. And they got them lighter. This bike, believe it or not, weighs less than a, the 300 uh, two-stroke. Good Lord, that's yeah. amazing. So it's like two, it's, uh, this bike is like 207 pounds dry and it's a 354 stroke. <sighs> and speaking of that, I notice, you know, talking about what we used to do back in the day, it was all for power. If you had a two-stroke, you put in the reeds, you put in the pipe. You've done nothing to increase the power. It's probably plenty, plenty right. for the woods, plenty for the single tracks. You're just dialing in the ride. Right, right. Except for California Company. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, I spoke too soon. California we got exhaust? Board. Yeah, this is an FM. Uh, I was going to say, you exhaust. said California Company, the great Donnie Emler. Shout yeah. out, Donnie Emler. Absolutely. Wow, so that'll add a few horse, huh? And uh, six pounds lighter. So this Ooh. is the titanium system here. Um, you know, basically floats away. So there's your, your stock. And then, I'm sorry, here's your stock, your stainless steel. And then here's your Donnie Embler. You can actually see the uh, uh, the way they do the, uh, the oh, little beautiful. flare out here for tor they do the a torque. Great job. Yeah, they so, do a great job. I love and, my FMF. You know, you're talking about three pounds and one pound. Wow, so. durable for the wood. You think if it takes a hit? Yeah, I've run. I've been running oh, them for years. Wow, that yeah. is so light. Yeah. Unbelievable. And I'll put a uh, carbon fiber uh, guard on here. Okay. Uh, I haven't ordered it yet. These aren't new plastics we're dealing with. No, it's just, just the brand new bike. Orange seat nowadays, so. Yeah, look at the, look at this. this grip has changed a lot. Um, something that the NGPC guys are doing that I don't know if you need uh, any desire to go to an oversized tank. 
No, I don't uh, know uh, because it, it'll run almost two hours on this tank of fuel. Because like I said, you're not where we ride, you're barely ever full, full throttle. So if you're quarter throttle to half throttle range, uh, you know, running through the trees and all that, you're not eating up fuel. Even out on the ice jack, it, this thing will go over an hour and a half on a tank of fuel. That's amazing. So when we do a three hour endurance race, we do switch riders uh, halfway through so we can get to the halfway point on a stock tank of gas. Mm. So, you know, going bigger, you got to be, you know, really out there far to, to go bigger. I love it. That's why I wanted to share this video that I thought that it was, it was so cool. And what you said uh, moments ago, simplifying it, because I talked about how different things are. Brian Deegan said the same thing. So great minds think alike. He, he told his son, it's, they're all the same. They got two wheels and handlebars. And as much as they've changed, it's still a motorcycle. So yeah. very cool. Very cool. Thank you guys for uh, tuning in for this. And before anybody gets mad and gets jealous, let me brag on you and say, you've earned it. Okay. Humble beginnings many years ago. Oh, How yeah. small was your garage 50, 45 years ago? It was just in the uh, backyard, yeah. a little shed that I bought yeah. at, uh, at the hardware store put together. Yeah. Worked out in the shed, but yeah, no, it's uh, so it's shout been, out to you. He's long, earned uh, every, every penny and every right to do this with a, with a hard work ethic and a great successful company. Thank so you. 57 years riding a dirt bike. Yeah, 57 well, that's years. That's something I wanna ask you too, that you, you and I, we drag race, we street bike ride. You told me a long time ago, the most fun you have on two wheels is out there on the dirt bike. Yeah, and the ice. And the ice, why, why, why would you say that? Compared to, you know, street bike riding's fun, drag racing is fun. I'm sure you've been on the oval track before. Well, you know, it's just you're with, you're with your buddies and your family. Uh, my daughters ride, but you know, you're out there with your your friends, and uh, you know, you're just having fun. I mean, it's, you kind of feel free, right? You're on a motorcycle, you want that freedom. And the dirt bike, uh, with the way we ride, uh, you know, we're not jumping off of huge triples and stuff like that. So the chance of getting hurt is pretty minimal. It's less. Uh, you know, we're averaging about 12 to 15 miles an hour through the forest. Uh, it's just a lot of fun, you know, and then when we're out on the ice, that's where the speeds get bigger, but there's nothing to hit out there. You know, you're out on a slippery ice lake with no, uh, uh, what should I say? If you did fall down, you just hold on to the bike and uh, there's no friction. Yeah, people ask me all the time at bike rallies and different places, where do I get started? How do I start on a street bike? And I say the first place you need to start is in the dirt. Yes. It is, even if we smash into trees out there, knock on wood, nobody's going to run you over. No tractor right. trailer's going to run you over. There's no texters, no drunk drivers. So that's the first place to learn how to ride a motorcycle. No desert cars. Uh, oh, no, yeah. Area. Watch out for those. Watch out for those. But Watch always those. wear the right equipment. Always that's wear That's why we're breaking that's a new why set of boots. Got the boots. So guys, because last time you came here, mm. we didn't have boots that fit you. How so, about that? And you still got the scar. That's so right. We, we, we tried with a set of hockey shin guards, but yeah. I learned better this time. <laughs> New set of boots, guys. We're going to Waldo, Wisconsin. You'll be able to see some of that on this channel, but big thanks to... Joe Koenig for showing us his brand new 2023. One shout out to the uh, KTM dealership, Reimertz uh, in Versailles, Ohio. They are the oldest Kawasaki dealer in the country. Wow. Okay, oldest Kawasaki dealer in the country. Uh, they're family friends. And I try to buy any, K, uh, any KX or any Kawasaki or any KTM from them. They do a great job getting me the product. I might have to go see him. Yep. Thank you so much, 70 Joe. What a great toy. Guys, it's not often you see a brand new 350 torn apart, getting mods. Can't wait to get it dirty, Joe. Me too. <laughs> Looking forward to it, guys.